All right, so right now we're starting the project. This is the first tank of the showroom that you can see is a huge mess. But what I mean by first tank is this is where it's gonna go. So we have, we're starting off with a 3000 right here in this location when I step back, that wall was like perfect for it. All our tanks that we do the online sales are in the back. We do the imports back there. So that's a separate area. Uh, we're gonna have a barn door type of door over there. That entrance right there is for the filtration. That's gonna be for this tank, air and throw the giant tank that's gonna take that whole wall. So this is gonna be a fun project. Hopefully we are gonna be able to get it done soon because we have to open up. We calculate that tank. It's probably gonna be to about right there. But right now, Faye Jai. Hey bro, say hi to your fans. What's up everybody? We're fixing this tank once again. And uh, the back detached. The, the seam separated probably the, from the truck bouncing. You think it was that or the cold? It was probably a combination of things, but I think it's more the, the bouncing. So like for example here, when we first got this tank from LA to Florida, the fork op, uh, forklift operator dropped and he did that little crack right there. We fixed it, thank God it didn't go to the front panel that much, just right there on the top. So overall, it's a beautiful tank. We plan on putting a background, making it look really nice. Mm -hmm. What do you think this tank is gonna be more like? Rare fish, rare stingrays? Not sure yet, probably stingrays I would think. So what do you think about the placement of this? Uh, well, we, we measured out everything as best as we could, right? Um, there's always gonna be last minute. Uh, I like to leave a little bit of room extra for those little mistakes, but we're like using every inch of this place. Um, it's, getting, it's getting tight. It's getting tight. It's almost like how in LA, like everything was touching. You know what I mean? We're, right. we're gonna leave the middle open, but all these tanks, they're, they're like almost like butted up against each other. Back to back. So yeah. we're making we're, we're make it look nice, but right now we're finding out this is the best spot for this guy because it's so wide. This tank is 19 and a half long and six feet wide. We're gonna show you guys how to fix an acrylic tank if you ever run into those problems. So right now I'm gonna take you guys here in the back. We left this much space here so we can walk comfortably back here. And if we ever have to fix anything, it's, uh, it's not gonna be a problem. So we prepped by putting a piece of plastic here just in case the, the glue runs through the back and mess up the paint. This is where it's split. So one of the things that I have to do right now is remove, as you can see right there when I put the shadow, the extra piece of acrylic from when it got detached. Look how much it went back, it's crazy. So what are you doing right now? Just putting in protection to make sure the glue doesn't run everywhere? Yes, because later on when we, when we squeeze this thing down, any excess glue, it can go in either direction. So right now you're taking any? Yeah, any excess off. The smoother, cleaner it is, then the, what the glue does is it, it, it melts the acrylic. Okay, so we have these, what are these, uh, what's the difference between that well, and the other ones? The all, other ones they're all woodworking clamps, but this one um, is stronger because it, it's, it's like a vice grip, so it's easier to tighten up. More? No, tighten. So this definitely works the best way to put it together. Now we have the back to the front attached. We're able to pretty much make it all straight. Fake Giant now is working from the bottom to the top. So when we put the acrylic glue in here, we can squeeze it together and leave it for a few days. Think it's gonna last? It <laughs> better. And we gotta leave enough gap to squirt the glue in there, right? Yeah, that's what these metal pieces are for. How many are we gonna use, three? Um, three, maybe four. Okay, so what we're doing now is placing these shims under where the, the clamp is, and then I'm gonna start tightening it up. This is forcing a little gap so that when we run the glue, the glue has a space to, to go run. in. And then once we're done running the glue, when we pull this, this will snap down because this is tightened. So what's the plan now? All right, so we had to change gears. Um, we're gonna go with a thicker glue. At first I was gonna use the, the thinner uh, water 
uh, base type of glue that uh, can seep right in. But the gap on the front side is too big. And then on the inside, it's too thin. So even if I went with the liquid one, it wouldn't bond properly. So what we're gonna do now is attempt to use the thicker Weld On 16 on the thicker gap, right? Okay. And we have this syringe bottle with a thicker gauge needle. Do you know so, what gauge that is or no? Uh, I think it was 20 or 65. And hopefully it's the opening is big enough to get this glue out. And we're gonna squeeze it right in there. Ooh. <laughs> we have to open this gap a little bit more. Okay, and then afterwards we're gonna tighten it up. And then from the inside, I will use the, the thinner glue to fill in the, the thinner, tighter gaps. And we almost have to do this fairly quick, right? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So we shim the hole back here now. And does it go in? Yes. It goes in, the needle goes in now. <sighs> okay, so hopefully that'll be the end of it. You want me to do it or you want to do it? I'll do it. Then after all the glue is in, we got to pull them out, right? Yeah. Oh. Okay. Okay. Good? We're good. We're good. Honestly, I don't like doing these projects because it takes forever and we can never get it done. Like, you think it's going to be something quick. We've been here for more than two hours already just figuring this out. Come on, Fijai, let's go. I got faith in you. See? So the goal is to get the whole thing filled up, right? as much as possible, and then when we clamp down, see, a lot of it's rolling down the back. That's all right. Yeah, some of the little areas we might have to squeeze the, yeah. the thin parts, the thin glue. But yeah, majority of it went to the front. So while the back is drying, now we're working from the inside piece. Mm -hmm. And that side is gonna be against the wall here. So we're putting it in now, let it dry a little bit so it doesn't run. This is the tricky part, guys, because I need glue on this side and on this side, and I'm trying not to make a mess of this running everywhere. Well, <laughs> so. one thing that we did on purpose, we left a little bit of water, so it's hard for you guys to see, but Fiji is standing on water just in case we drip, it doesn't get in the acrylic inside. Now I'm just gonna have to do it. See, I, I think I made it a little bit too thick there, but I have a tissue, so that part drips, is dripping on the acrylic. And the rest can just drip into the tank. Ready? Go. Okay. I think we did almost a professional job. <laughs> I mean, for what we had, it looks pretty good. I want to explain to people at home in case they're wondering, you know, why are these tanks breaking? There's also another reason. The, the, the trailer that we used was so long that the flatbed is truly not flat. If you ever see it on the freeway, it's arched like right. this. But we also put the forklift on the end, so it bounced. That the was whole a different way. reason too. So yeah. that for was that the same yeah. trailer as this? Yeah. Okay. So, but in, in other cases, because the truck can handle much heavier load. This is just a big hollow tank. So the weight wasn't enough to compress the axis to make it straight. So it was still arched. So I hope you learned something for today. Thank okay. you for watching. Right, great. I can't wait to put this back together. And we'll see you guys next time. Let's go. Okay.